Inverse kinematics is the way to place joints in order to read the target. It can be applied in different types of animations. The first method I'd like to show you can be applied for a two-dimensional arm. Here we have an origin of the arm, two arm segments, the end effector, and the target. Arm segments are represented as vectors. It's important to check if the point can't be reached. To do this, we verify that the distance from the origin to the target is less than the sum of all length of arm segments. Now it's time to find the angles. We can easily find angle C with either arc sine or arc cosine, but with others it will be a bit tricky. Angle A can be represented as a sum of angle C and angle beta. We can also find angle B if we look at it as a difference of angle theta and pi minus angle A. Using the law of cosine, we can easily calculate theta and beta angles because we already know all the lengths of arm segments. Here we use the arc cosine function, which is the reverse cosine function, to get values of theta and beta. There is also another way to do it, using circles intersections. And I find this way easier. So we can set a height from the intersection on the distance vector, and the distance between the point where the height falls and the center of the first circle we will name A. Since both equations are equal to the height squared, we can equate right-hand sides and solve the new equation for A. Now let's get the height. We can calculate the height's length using the Pythagorean theorem. But how do we get the height's direction? Well, this might be tricky. So here we have a circle and its radius and it can be represented as a vector, which obviously has projections. Let's draw a vector, rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Angle beta is equal to 180 minus 90 minus alpha degrees, and that is 90 minus alpha degrees. Angle phi is equal to 90 degrees minus beta, and that is equal to alpha. Here we can see that the first radius x projection is equal to its length multiplied by the cosine of alpha. Same goes for its y projection, but we use the sine function instead of cosine. And for the second radius, to calculate the x-axis projection, we multiply the radius length by the negative sine of alpha. For its y-axis, we multiply the radius by the cosine. Hence, we can calculate the height's vector's projections. Now we have to calculate points 04 and 05, which are the intersections. Firstly, we need to find point 03. As we know, A is the distance between points O3 and O1. So the point can be represented as a sum of O1 and the normalized distance vector multiplied by A. Now in all this, finding intersections won't be hard. So the first intersection point is equal to O3 plus the height vector and the second is equal to the O3 minus the height vector. It's not hard to apply it for an arm with two joints. We still have to do it for more than two joints. Let's have a look at an arm consisting of four joints. Using circles, we can find every intersection. Here, we are going to start from the end of the chain. So, we set a circle at the target's position, with the radius of the last joint's length. Then, we find a possible side. By this, I mean a side which can form a triangle with the force joint and the target. Then, from the origin, we set a new circle with the radius of our possible side. So we can see that circles intersect in two different points. So how do we choose which one to use? Actually, there is no the correct one, but we still need to choose. For this, we add an external parameter. I'll refer to it as a pole. Basically, it's just a point in the space that we can place wherever we want. Now when the pole is defined, we choose the nearest intersection to it. Then we repeat these steps again until we do it for every joint. When we have the intersections found, we can calculate the joints vectors. If this method is correctly implemented, it should work with any amount of joints. Here I have 4 joints. If I change it to 7 joints, it will work.
Also, if the chain has a huge amount of joints, the program gives a very compelling result. So if you want to play with the program, you can either program it yourself or just download mine from GitHub. I really hope I have explained everything good enough. My plans now are to make videos that cover 3D inverse kinematics, procedural animation and 3D renderer. Subscribe to my channel not to miss the new videos and press the like button if you liked.